Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a Figma plugin using Vite and your UI library of choice. I'll be using a Preact starter template in this example, but the exact same steps apply to any of the other uh, templates that Vite provides, such as Svelte, Vue, or any of the others. We'll take the sample plugin from the Figma Getting Started Guide and convert it into a Preact application that we can then build and run as a Figma plugin. Now, before we dive in, let's take a brief look at how Figma plugins in general work and what are some of the considerations that we'll need to keep in mind as we build this out. So Figma plugins at their core have essentially two parts. So first we have the main plugin code that runs on the main thread in the Figma sandbox. And this code has access to the Figma scene and all the Figma APIs, uh, but it is isolated in the sandbox uh, for security purposes. Then we have the UI itself, which is essentially an iframe that runs in Figma and has access to a limited set of the browser APIs. It's basically a single HTML file that can have uh, ES6 JavaScript in it, some CSS and your basic HTML. Now, since the two parts of a plugin are separate from each other, the only way for them to communicate is through something called message posting. And we'll see an example of that as we get into the sample code for our plugin. Okay, so with that in mind, let's create our plugin. We'll use the example provided by Figma as our starting point. To get started, open the Figma app and create a design file. I've already got one here, uh, but go ahead and create one of your own. Then go to plugins, development, new plugin. Here we'll need to give it a name. So I'll type in Figma sample then select Figma design and click next, and then select custom UI, and then you'll need to pick a folder to save it in. Press save, and that will create our sample plugin project. Now, if we try to run this plugin, you'll see that we get an error, and that's because we need to install the dependencies first. Open the newly created folder in your editor, and then run npm install. We then need to build it, so run npm run build, and once that's done, we can run our plugin. So back in Figma, go to the plugins and click run. And you'll see in here, we have a simple input where you can specify the number of squares to create and then can either create or cancel, which will essentially just close the plugin. So if click on create, you'll see that it generates the number of squares that was specified. So as you can see, it's a pretty simple plugin, but it's enough for us to get started. All right, now let's go back to the project and check out the source code for this plugin. So back in our editor, let's take a look at the source code itself. Figma plugins consist of two parts, the UI and the main thread plugin code that can interact with the Figma APIs. These are configured in the manifest JSON file, which is the configuration file for our plugin. This file describes our plugin. As you can see, we have a name, unique ID, API version, and so on. And here's where we set the location of the main thread and the UI code respectively. So you'll see we have main with code.js, which is our main thread code, and UI with ui.html, which is our UI. Now this sample plugin uses TypeScript and the main thread code is actually in the code.ts file, which is why we need to build it first. However, if we look at ui.html, we'll see that this is a plain vanilla JavaScript and HTML file. When we run the plugin in Figma, the UI that we see is what's in here. So you'll see we have the header, the input, and our buttons here. And then we have some JavaScript to enable the user input. You'll notice here we have the message posting mechanism that I mentioned. We won't get into it in this video, but this is essentially a browser API that the UI has access to, which enables communication with the main thread code. Now, speaking of main thread, back in the code.ts file, the UI is bootstrapped using the show UI method, which creates an iframe and loads our UI.html file. We also have some code that's listening for the messages from the UI, and you'll see that this is where we're actually interacting with Figma and creating the squares on the screen. All right, now that we know how Figma plugins work at their core, let's take a look at how we can use V to actually build them. In regards to the UI in particular, a single HTML file is fine for simple use cases, but for a more complex plugin, you may want to use a UI library like React and use the same patterns and workflows that you're already used to. Now, this is where Vite comes into play. It will allow you to use the same setup that you normally do for any other application 
and build your plugin in a similar way. We'll use a Vite Preact starter template to scaffold our plugin, which we'll then bundle and use for our plugin UI. To get started with Vite, we'll use the npm create Vite command, which will bootstrap a Vite project. And we'll call this Figma Vite. And here we'll select Preact as our library and TypeScript. And now we need to go into the project folder that was created and install the dependencies. And another thing I like to do in all my projects is add prettier for code formatting. So we'll need to create a default config. And now we can open this up in VS Code. And you'll see this bootstrapped our Vite Preact project. So with that in place, we're ready to start migrating over our sample plugin code. First, let's copy over our UI. So open up app.tsx and you'll see there's the sample starter template here. We can get rid of all of this and we don't need this anymore. And next we'll need to move over our elements from the ui.html file in the Figma sample code. So let's go ahead and copy over these elements here and paste them here. You'll see well, right away we're getting a couple of errors. So let's fix that. So this needs a closing tag and then just save the file and let Prettier fix our formatting. All right, now since we're using Preact here, let's make this input a controlled component so that we can read the value that is being input. So uh, we conveniently already have some state set up here, so let's just reuse that. Uh, so let's change this to five just to match the sample uh, plugin. And then we'll change this to read from the account. And we'll also need an onChange event handler to uh, update our account value. I usually like to create separate functions for these event handlers. So let's create one called handle on change. And then we'll create this function here. And this function takes in an event object. And since we're using TypeScript, we'll need to type that. Now in here, we'll need to update our count using the set count. So we'll say set count and we'll need to pass it our event target that value. Now you'll notice TypeScript completing here, uh, and this is because we need to type our target to be an HTML input element. So we can do that by saying const target is equal to event dot target as HTML input element. And now in here we can simply use the target const. Now you'll notice another error here with argument of type string is not assignable to a parameter of type number. And that's because our count is actually a integer. So we'll need to use the parse int to actually convert the string value into a number. Next, we need to port over the button behavior from the sample plugin. So if we look at the existing code, we'll see that we have uh, event handlers for the create and cancel buttons. And these do the message posting functionality that uh, we were talking about earlier. So let's go ahead and create these in our Vid app. So let's start with the create button. And similar to our on change event handler here, we'll create a handle create and a handle cancel methods. So let's go ahead and create those functions. So handle create and this will post the message for uh, creating our rectangles. And you'll see conveniently the um, variable name is called the same as our state variable. So we don't even need to change that. And then the same thing for the handle cancel. We'll copy over this line here. And let's go ahead and save that. All right, now with that first part out of the way, next we need to migrate our main thread plugin code. So this is the code.ts uh, file in our sample plugin that runs the main thread plugin code. Now, since we're also using TypeScript in our Vite project, we can simply copy over the code.ts file and have Vite transpile it. So let's copy this file and back in our Vite project, uh, we'd like to maintain some separation of concerns between the main thread plugin code and the UI. So we'll just create a new folder right at the root here. 
and we'll call it lib. And we'll just paste our code.ts file in there. Uh, this way, the UI code that's under the source folder, it kept separate, so it helps to keep that separation. Now, one thing we'll need to do here is if we go back to our sample plugin, you'll see that there's a Figma plugin typings here for TypeScript. So we'll actually need to install these. So back in our Figma project, let's go ahead and install these. And then we'll need to update our TS config to match the one in the sample. So we'll need to copy the type roots and add that to our TS config in our V project. So let's just save that. Now here's the trick. Since we still want to keep the main thread code as a separate file, we'll need to process it separately from the main app, uh, which is essentially just our UI now. So there's a few ways to go about this, uh, but by far the simplest one is using ESBuild as it's already something that comes with Veed and is used by Veed internally. So it's already installed and we can just simply use it. Now, if you're not familiar, ESBuild is a JavaScript module bundler and it's insanely fast. Um, it's also extremely easy to use with a simple CLI command and just a few flags needed to do what we want. So it makes perfect sense to utilize it here. So in our package JSON file, uh, if we go to the script section, we'll need to add another script here that will transpile our code.ts file and output it into a bundle. So we'll name this build uh, colon main, and you'll see this runs ES build pointing to the code.ts file here using the bundle and out file flags. And this just tells ES build to put the generated file into the dist folder which is where the rest of our code will be as well. Now we'll need to update our main build script to also run this. So we'll need to add npm run build main to here as well. And now we're ready to run our build. So let's go ahead and check it out. npm run build. And you'll see this generated output into the dist folder. And if we open it up and look at it, we'll have the code.js file here, which is our main thread code. So this is transpiled from TypeScript into JavaScript that can run and our index HTML file as well. Now there's one last thing left to do before we can run this as a plugin and that's to copy over our manifest file. So you'll remember we had the manifest JSON uh, describing our plugin. So let's just copy that file and put it at the root of our project. And we'll need to update the name to match the project name. So Figma Vite. And then we'll need to tell it to where to look for the main thread code. So since it's no longer at the uh, root of our project and instead it's in the dist folder, we'll need to update that. Uh, and then the same thing for the UI. So it's no longer UI.html, it's actually in the dist folder and it's a index.html file. So let's update that as well. All right, now we're basically ready to try out our plugin. So let's go ahead and do that in Figma. All right, so back in Figma, let's open up our plugins. And in here, we can import the plugin from Manifest instead of creating a new plugin this time. And let's select the Manifest file in our Vite project. Press open. But now if we run, there's a blank screen. Why is that? Well, the reason is because our app code isn't actually being loaded. You see, the way Figma plugins work is the plugin will only load the files listed in our manifest file. So in this case, our main thread code and our UI code, which is the index file. Now, since we can only specify an HTML file for our UI and a JavaScript file for the main thread code, uh, which is you know essentially our backend, we need to ensure that our index file includes everything for the plugin UI. So that means all the CSS and JavaScript that our app needs to run, it has to be included in this single index HTML file. And now this is one of the reasons why we're using Preact is it's, it's much smaller than React and still gives us everything that we need to build our plugin, but it has a much smaller footprint. So the question is, how do we do this with Vite? And for this, we have a handy plugin called Vite Plugin Single File. And this plugin, as the name implies, it makes Veed bundle everything into a single HTML file. And when you know, that's exactly what we're looking for. So uh, this plugin is perfect for our need. So let's go ahead and install it back on in our project. 
we'll add it as a dev dependency. And then we'll need to update our vconfig to actually use this plugin. So let's go ahead and do that as well. We'll need to import it and then just add it to our plugins array here. And now we're good to go. So now if we run the build again, you'll see that instead of generating all the assets in our disk folder, we only have the single HTML file. And if we open this up, you'll see now it includes all the JavaScript that's actually needed to run our application. And again, this is one of the reasons why we went with Preact is because it's much smaller when we're doing something like this. Uh, you'll also notice that the CSS is included here as well. All right, so let's see if this uh, fixes our problem. So back in Figma, let's load our plugin. We don't need to re-import it because the file location hasn't changed. So let's just open it up. And there we go. Our plugin runs and you'll see it looks just like the sample plugin with some of the um, Vite styles applied. So that's nice. Um, so let's actually try to run it. And there we go. This is our sample plugin, but it's not running as a Preact application built using Vite. Now, one thing you'll notice is the default window size looks a little funky. So uh, let's fix that. We can uh, we can change the size of this window by going to our uh, main thread code and in here where we're bootstrapping the uh, the UI or index HTML file in this case we can provide several uh, additional options and one of them is height. So let's just set that to 500 and the same for width. So if we save and run our build again and back in Figma, let's open it up. And now we have the window size uh, looking a little bit better. So that about does it for this video. Uh, hopefully it gives you a good starting point for building your Figma plugins. Now, obviously this is a pretty basic example, but it should be enough to get you started and heading in the right direction. There's a lot more we can do here. Uh, for example, we can add Tailwind CSS for our styling or any other tools and libraries that you may already be using for building your applications. But that will be a topic for another video. For now, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.